Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's try that again. Hello and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. I'm Alyssa Hope. I am a cosplayer, crafter, special effects makeup artist, and a lover of fantasy. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my Young Galadriel cosplay from the new Rings of Power TV show coming out later this fall. Um, I'm really excited about it. It's the whole reason I started the channel was so that I could make this video, uh, but I had a lot of fun making it, so I might do some more now. Uh, stick around if you want to see how I made that cosplay happen. So at the time I made this costume, we had very little reference to go off of. I really just had the one image released to Vanity Fair magazine, as well as a few screenshots that I was able to pull from the teaser trailer. So this might not end up being the most screen accurate cosplay, but I'm still really happy with how it turned out. So typically I do my cosplay builds with EVA foam for the most part, um, but for this project I was really trying to achieve this kind of smooth, uniform, single sheet of metal look while still having all the intricate design that she has on her chest plate. So this is the solution that I came up with. Um, let's dive right in. For this project I used a clothing display mannequin, but this wasn't perfect because it was much smaller than I am and it also didn't have a back, but I made it work. A dress form that's your size and wrapped in clean film might work out better here. I also used wed clay, a water-based clay that's inexpensive and great for sculpting. I used about one and a half blocks, but that's mostly because I had to build up the mannequin to be my size. Finally, I used a few sculpting tools to make my life easier. To start out, I beefed this little lady up a bit to be closer to my size. I just kind of eyeballed it because I'm extremely lazy and I never measure anything. Can't live my life like that. I created the basic form of the chest plate, then used my serrated kidney tool to even out the clay's surface. I then used a damp sponge to smooth the whole thing out. With a clean base, I started to draw in the armor's pattern, using the image on my phone as a constant reference point. Wed clay is great because if you mess up, which I did many, many times, you can just smooth over it with your finger and try again. Once I had my pattern drawn out, I kept adding new pieces of clay to form all the little ridges, smoothing them into place. Dipping my finger in water definitely helped with the smoothing process, but if you get the clay too wet, it turns mushy. All in all, I think I spent about four hours sculpting this, but if you need to stop for more than an hour or so, make sure you completely cover your sculpture with wet paper towels followed by cling wrap. And she is done. My back hurt so bad from stooping over this for hours, I wish I had propped her up instead, but hey, it be like that sometimes. My body is broken. Couple things happened. So I did not wrap up my sculpt last night because I wanted it to harden a little bit so that maybe when I put the warbler over it, it wouldn't like smash down as easily. Um, but what I forgot is that as wed clay dries, it cracks. So I had a huge crack down the middle of it this morning that I had to fix and then um, wrap it up before I left for work. Uh, so I ended up doing the paper towel and ceram wrap method just to keep it moist until I could get to it today. So my plan of attack was to take a large sheet of black warbler shiny side down and just heat it up and drape it over the sculpture. This became a process of continually heating up small sections and shaping the warbler over the clay while it was still hot. Being careful not to press too hard because the clay underneath was still fairly soft. A big part of me was scared that the clay would melt, but I never kept the heat gun pointed at one spot for too long, so luckily this didn't happen. This process took me about one hour, so here's what it looks like sped up. To press the warbla into some of the narrower crevices, I used the bottom side of my wooden sculpting tool. Sometimes pressing down one section lifts another, so just keep reheating and pressing until the whole thing is to your liking. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you can cut off any excess warbla. Yeah, it went a lot smoother than I honestly was expecting it to. So, okay. 
think I'm gonna start by just kind of digging out some of the clay bits. I don't want to bend the armor too much just yet. After digging out some of the clay, I just went around the perimeter, loosening up the edges until eventually the whole thing popped free. And here we have it. Needs a bit of cleanup, but overall, very happy with this. Yeah, it'll fit. Bunch of clay in the backside. We're gonna need to clean this up. Bit of water, bit of alcohol, should be fine. I used a similar method for her hip armor. Since we don't know what the back of it looks like yet, I decided to make my life easier and just make it symmetrical. That way I only had to do one sculpt that could be used for both the left and right hip. I sculpted on a piece of glass that I placed over my drawing using the lines to fill in clay one section at a time. And once again I heated a sheet of warbla over the top, pressing into all the small details. I lightly heated up the final warbla sheet and taped it to something round so that when it cooled it would have a slight bend to it. Don't forget to make two so you have one for each side. Where I ran into some trouble was the back of the chest plate. In short, what I ended up doing was creating a duct tape pattern of my own back and building up the front of the mannequin with clay until my pattern fit in place over it. Then it was a matter of once again heat forming a large sheet of warbler over it. Alright y'all, this next part of the process is extremely important if you're trying to get that um, super shiny metallic look, not look like a piece of warbler. However, it is also the step that really tried my patience and made me want to just like cut my own hands off so that I could never do art ever again. I started by spraying a solid four or five coats of sandable automotive filler and primer. You want a thick coating so that when you start sanding, it doesn't wear down to the warbler. I tried to spare myself some pain by using my electric sander on larger areas. But mostly I had to do it by hand, starting with 180 grit, then moving to 400, and finally wet sanding with 800 grit. Are these the ideal grit amounts? I don't know, but they're the ones I grabbed at Home Depot, so they're the ones I used. Once finished, I sprayed the entire thing with a few more coats of primer and repeated the entire sanding process. If you want that ultra smooth, perfect finish, you should probably do a third round of spraying and sanding, but I simply did not have the mental or physical capacity to do so. Next I used this dark steel colored metallic spray paint and gave it a few coats until it was well covered. The final result was almost too shiny and perfect, so I weathered it down a little with rub and buff metallic wax. I found my perfect color by mixing ebony and pewter together. A tiny bit goes a long way, so just dab a small amount onto a cloth and then rub it into your armor in a circular motion. You can even layer colors over one another for a cool effect. For the star on her chest plate, I printed out a picture of an eight-pointed star, taped it to a piece of glass, and then used oil clay to sculpt the shape over it. I stuck a little pearl sticker in the center, and then I made a silicone mold which I used to make a resin casting of the star. I cleaned it up, spray painted it gold, and then later I used E6000 to glue it to the final version of the armor. And yeah, that's the whole process. For the rest of the armor, I used EVA foam instead of Warbla. It's cheaper, it's lightweight, and I was just kind of running out of time to do this build. I also ran out of time to do her elbow armor, but maybe when there's more references, I will give it another shot. I had a lot of fun making this cosplay. It was so fun to try something new. It was so much fun wearing this to WonderCon, even though it's not the most comfortable cosplay, but I mean, they rarely are, so. Let me know if you end up giving this method a try, or if you found it interesting, or just say hi, because it's my first video and I would love to hear from you. Without further ado, here are some photos of the final cosplay. 
no video footage yet because I am a dummy and I forgot to take some of that, but I did have a glorious photo shoot with my friend and we got some really cool pics that made me feel like a freaking badass elf warrior bitch. <laughs>